All right. All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week and you can watch it at your convenience later. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where our archives are available on our website. Both the live show and the archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. Um, and many other states are called the state library. We're just called the commission. Nebraska likes to be special. <laughs> but um, so we are actually a state agency for all types of libraries in this in that you can think of. So um, there will be topics on our show for public libraries, K-12, academics, <clears throat> museums, um, correctional facilities, anything that's a library, um, we could possibly have something on um, about them. So um, a pretty broad. Our only criteria is that it's something that um, has to do with libraries, um, something libraries are doing, something we think they could be doing, uh, book review sessions sometimes we have, many training sessions, uh, demos of services and products that are upcoming, um, tech-related things, book-related things, programming-related things. Uh, we're, we're all over the place. Just library, libraries is our focus. Uh, we do have uh, Nebraska Library Commission staff do presentations sometimes, come on the show and do um, episodes on things we're doing here specifically in Nebraska or at the Nebraska Library Commission. But we also bring in guest speakers sometimes, and that's what we have this morning. With me today is uh, Tina Walker. She's the director at our Keene Memorial Library in Fremont, Nebraska. And she uh, drove down today to uh, join me to talk about partnerships, growing partnerships were least expected, some really cool, fun things yes. um, that they have been doing in Fremont uh, for the library. So I'm just going to hand over you to tell us all about everything you've been going. Thank you, Chris. I've been going, yeah. So we did a strategic plan uh, last year, and part of our strategic plan was one of our goals is to grow our partnerships throughout the community. We've been doing it for the last, I've been there for three years and we've been mm -hmm. doing it for three years, but we actually incorporated it into our strategic plan and I've encouraged all my staff to think way outside the box. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't wanna do just the standard normal partnerships that we usually have. So we partner with anybody from nonprofits to businesses, to banks, to schools, um, homeschool groups, et cetera. We don't really care what group you are. If you have a project that we are interested in or mm -hmm. we can help partner with them for some educational purpose, we'll partner with them. So this uh, presentation today, I had presented it to present at the conference, but I didn't get selected. So uh, it's something some people have read about in our local newspaper. I've been writing about it for almost a year now. Yeah. So we had a friends member. You guys have been in the news a lot for things you've been doing. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we, we like to think outside the box. So we had a friends member, you can see from the picture on the slide that uh, owns a liquor store. And he found a way to incorporate the liquor with books. This picture, I have to say, I'm sure there are librarians out there who are just panicking seeing this open glass of beer on top of a stack of books. Yes. <laughs> don't do this. Yeah, don't put the beer on the books. That's not how this works. Get an open glass. So I'm just, this is just representative of the idea. So this is Dave's drive through Liquor and Book Nook. And this is going to be our official title for it. Um, one of the things to be clear on here is it does not say book sale, it is a book nook, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, and I'll go through everything. These pictures are from the Fremont Tribune. They came in and did an amazing right story. Stories, yeah. And then the Omaha World Herald came in and did a great story on this. So uh, I'll go through the pictures and then we'll talk a little bit about the project. You'll notice the uh, Miller light and the Bush light and then the books in the background mm -hmm. with a disco ball on the wall. Um, <laughs> So this is Jeff Rice. He's the individual that we're talking about. He's the idea man behind this entire project. You can see the books on the shelf. Um, all you librarians out there, don't freak out that the books are not in the same direction and they're not in order. But uh, this is Jeff. He does this all. And it's this is like a small like bookstores do that. Like the, exactly. used bookstores will go put things however they can make them fit. And that's what he does. The, yeah. So I can't really see this picture very well. I can. I hope you guys yeah. can see it better. Yeah. So it's called the Tunnel of Love for some people. Yeah, drive in, 
and the people at the counter come over to you and say, what would you like? They go get your liquor. They bring it to you. If you have a specific, say you want, give me a couple sci-fi books, they'll go get a couple books for you and give them to you. Mm -hmm. You pay them and then you drive out. Uh, you can get out of your car. You can walk around and look at liquor and walk around and look mm -hmm. at books, then get back in your car. But it's all inside, so mm -hmm. weather doesn't matter. That's awesome. Yeah. It goes all the way through the wintertime, summertime. It's summertime gets a little warm, but their books, mm -hmm. nothing happens to them. Uh, they do run air conditioning in there. It's pretty well moderated because the door, garage door is shut when there's not a car there's coming. Come in, yeah. So there's like a little beeper, like you go through a mm -hmm. bank that mm -hmm. tells you there's somebody out there, so they open the garage door. And so this is the tunnel of love. This is the drive through bookstore. Mm -hmm. So people ask me, how on earth did you get started with this project? And Jeff Rice is the owner of Dave's Liquor, and he's a member of our friends group, and his mom is a longtime yeah. member, and she's a diehard volunteer for our annual book sale. So Jeff has already been incorporated in the library. He's been helping us out for years. He actually physically helps move all the books for the annual book sale. Oh, cool. So he's mm -hmm. like our muscle, and we need him greatly. But he knew that we needed space for our temporary uh, book nook. So we, at the front door of the library, we just have a metal shelf mm -hmm. and we have some books that we throw up there and you can make donations on those books. Mm -hmm. It's not very big. Uh, we've run out of room in the library. We don't have space for this. Uh, we're working on an expansion, which will actually have a, a friend's book nook area in it. But right now yeah. we don't have space. So he was looking around his liquor store and the wall where the library shelves are at with the books was empty and he just saw this empty space mm -hmm. and he was contemplating like putting a mural up there mm. or paying somebody to paint it or something and he was going and moving all these books every week and he thought I could put books here yeah and he completely system. came up with the idea he built his own shelves that's how I wanted to know where the shelving came from the, the nice looking wooden he shelving. did a great job yeah. and he came to the friends and said if you give me a thousand dollars I'll build shelves all on that wall Mm -hmm. I'll take care of all the books, et cetera, et cetera. I'll paint it. We'll make it great. Um, so the friends ponied up the money for the shelving nice. from Menards. He put all the manpower into it and built them all himself. Wow. So he also decided on a very bright color to draw attention to the books. Mm -hmm. It's bright, bright yellow. Um, <laughs> and it's wonderful because when any um, newspaper or article gets written about this, they take a picture of that bright oh, yellow yeah. wall. So it's wonderful. <clears throat> Uh, had to convince a lot of people that this was a good thing. That's uh, one of my slides. Mm -hmm. So it's, you think about a liquor store and a library. And I live in conservative Nebraska. Mm -hmm. We are in the Bible Belt. And I had a lot of pushback at the beginning about uh, advertising for liquor. And it was a tough call to make, but we finally just said, we're just going to do it. So uh, some of the things we had to consider so the responses that I received were from patrons, community members, uh, friends, board members, and uh, friends members, and then the response from the city mm. about advertising for a local liquor store. Right. So we went through, we listened to what everybody had to say, and we had to weigh the pros and cons. Uh, overall, people questioned it, but I didn't really have anybody challenging it. Mm. So like uh, yeah. some of the folks doing mm -hmm. um, drag show uh, story times right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah they're getting you know people are out protesting and yeah. actual challenges we didn't get any of that so mm -hmm. i just got a couple emails and some phone calls um the city thought it was great really? they were on board yeah. they thought it was hilarious actually <laughs> um okay so we did get some challenges but you know jeff's doing all the work mm -hmm. he's not charging us a dime he doesn't take a percentage right. at all okay and it's free, it's free advertising for him mm -hmm. and it really drew some people in but we don't have to do anything and I'll show you what the outcome of the book sale has been and it's actually been very positive for us. So we had to look at this as somebody's willing to do something for free for us mm -hmm. to provide money to the friends group that comes directly to the library for programming and events. Right. So So the questions that the book had questions, it was mainly about should a public should like a public entity like a pub the public library as part of the city be specifically promoting a particular business or right. a particular liquor based business because that's two different things i mean right. libraries partner with businesses all the time i mean reaching out to them for will you donate the materials we need for you know the wood for this makerspace equipment right. and and then you know the idea is you'll get to free advertising at the library a great thing you're doing for the community i mean so it happens all the time so was right. the, the whole the, the booze part was what the issue was really it was just the liquor yeah. um we i actually had a couple older 
uh, individuals tell me that um, I'll never go through there because I don't drink. Well, that's fine. They came back later and told me that they drove through and loved it. So <laughs> they said you, you don't, don't have to buy the no. book here. You can just go in there and buy books, right? Yes. So, you don't have to go in for the booth side. I mean, it's and it's, we technically yeah. have okay. opened up a second branch of the library without paying for it because mm -hmm. it's uh, way on the other side of town. So the individuals are oh, walking up okay. there with their kids and mm -hmm. walking through with their strollers and their bikes and mm -hmm. they're getting books off the shelf and going home. Yeah. So I've actually had people tell me it's like having a second branch on the other side of town. But these aren't books that are being lent out that they return. No. This is all sale money. So they're it's donation money. Donation, whatever they want to donate. And okay. the best part is, oh, we'll go through some of the numbers here, but we made over $7,000 in the first 12 months. Wow. That's awesome. The first two months that he sent us the statistics and how much he had made, we about fell out of our chairs. <laughs> uh, we couldn't believe it. So we're averaging four fifty to five hundred dollars a month on book donations. Wow. And the donation book nook is not a sale. We do not pay sales tax. Ah, okay. So it's very important because the annual sale, we do pay sales tax because we are selling the books. Mm -hmm. This is donations only, no sales tax. Free donation at whatever you want to. Uh, yes. Right. So Jeff has seen a small uptake in his own personal business. Um, sure. But while I'm here getting a book, I might as well get a six pack. Exactly. <laughs> and honestly, one of the things I've heard from a lot of the community members is if he's going to give his time and effort to support the library friends group like this, mm -hmm. then the friends are going to support his business. Mm -hmm. So it's been a two way uh, sure. show and it's been great. Uh, but we're also getting larger donations for our books. Hmm. So somebody goes in, they have a $20 bill. Mm -hmm. They buy $14 in liquor and they get three or four books. They just tell them to keep the change. Keep it for the books. So we're getting $6 for those three books. It's so just easier, yeah. It's more than we're getting. Um, and because it is to support the library and programming and the friends group, people will buy $5 for the stuff and give them a 20 and just tell them to donate the rest. Wow. So it's been a very positive outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't had any... I haven't had any negative comments since it opened and turned out to be so successful. Right. Once it's a success, the complaints go. Yeah, nobody yeah. cares. So <laughs> even though we're recommending 50 cents to a dollar a book, we almost always get more than that per mm -hmm. book. There, we have to, or there's no way we'd be making $500 a month no. on oh, yeah. book donations. Yeah. Yeah. So right now I don't have the slide or number in here. He keeps about 3,000 books. Okay, I was wondering how shelves. many were there, yeah. And he comes back over and gets the books and takes them over. I think that's on my next slide here. So sustainability, as long as Jeff is physically able to do this and he owns the store, we'll keep going. Sure. He does all the man labor. He does, mm -hmm. comes over, they sort through the books, he takes the boxes, he transports them to his store. And he isn't a librarian, has never been trained in librarianship. Mm -hmm. He loves sorting the books and putting them up on the shelf and being the one that decides what's gonna go on those shelves. Wow. And putting them in Definitely. categories mini collection development or absolutely I mean, <laughs> and he hasn't so if somebody comes in and says i want a book about something he has things organized so we can pay or his staff can know where right. to go to find very broad that, categories that's a long wall right to try and find something specific on i would think the three categories i know about yeah. are the big sellers children's books sure so they keep those all on one end and then fiction and non-fiction so they don't break it down into romance or sci-fi mm -hmm. or anything um, we've actually taken his lead, so next year for the annual book sales, instead of 42 categories, we're going down to 20. Yeah. So it'll be easier for us, less time involved, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. People will still get their books. Yeah. Um, but it does also help the friends out, reduce the storage costs. We have so many donations. Oh, yeah. Not people this. bring so many books to libraries. They, yeah. It's amazing. Well, and especially with the flood. Oh, yeah. It's been crazy, but we've had to turn away a lot because of the damage. Well, that's, that's the thing. We heard... Um, we did do here at the Library Commission, being the state agency, we did reach out to all the libraries in the state <clears throat> to find out what happened, how was your dam, you know, where's your, how yep. you're doing, and mir miraculously, most of our buildings did not have much damage. People's homes, and Tina yes. did experience that in her own personal home, mostly people's homes were damaged. The library buildings were fine, and almost no no libraries lost any materials. Or yeah. books or things. Um, I think I, I remember one library they had in a storage unit. So once again, not at the library, the um, <clears throat> things for their upcoming summer reading program. Oh, right. Um, but people, other libraries donated stuff. And so they got, so that got damaged and destroyed. But, um, and so we keep getting calls from places outside of the state, you know, I'm need? sure everyone in the Midwest, 
I have books I want to send to your library. It's like, actually, they don't need them. They actually did well. Now, if you want to do something else, you can, or if you want to donate them, realizing they're not going to go into the collection, but they may go to something like this right. instead. They will be part of a book sale to help earn money for the library. But we actually got weirdly lucky, lucky oh my gosh, <clears> yes. that um, the buildings themselves of um, the libraries in Nebraska, at least, um, came through pretty well. And you yeah. reminded me of the next topic I was going to contact you about. Mm -hmm. um, being a library in a flood zone mm, and how yeah. do you deal with that afterwards. Yes, so I kind of on another Encompass Live. Future, look for that future. Yes. <laughs> like to talk about how we how we got through it, what we did, and mm -hmm. how the public library assisted yeah. with that. So but yeah, so we're getting a lot of books. Um, the friends have had, not this past year, but the year before, we had like seven different estates donate their entire wow. estate. They had to um, purchase additional storage units mm -hmm. because we had too many books. Well, now that Jeff is rotating 3,000 books out through his store, they have one storage unit and they never have to go more. They could, it's going out so much, so quickly. And yeah. he's also helping um, keep a better eye on the books. So sometimes we don't always see the damaged, stale, wet, mm. moldy books that come in these giant boxes that we get. Yeah. He, because he's rotating books and looking at them more often, we're able to weed out a lot more damaged books and items. So it's yeah. keeping the smell down, keeping the... You don't want to spread the, the mold to other books or exactly. you don't want to sell those kind of books in your book sales yep. and have it move that mold into someone's home. Exactly. Yeah, those are the ones that go and it happens. They go in the dumpster. They have they to. They have to. Yeah. So, and we're allowing more families the opportunity for children's books and new material. For, so for them, it's new material. Yeah. Us, it's not. It's old, older donated things or things that we've weeded out of the library collection, which means it's probably at least five years old. But for these families, they're new. Mm -hmm. So because we're on the other side of town with this, yeah. library branch these families are coming in uh, and getting all these books throughout the year for their kids and they're swapping they'll bring books in and donate it to Jeff and he'll take them and take them to the friends group for them mm -hmm. so he's also a drop-off site for our donations oh from the other side of town yes so they don't have to go as far in. Nice. and because uh, he has an easy drive-through easy way to get them there mm -hmm. he can take oh, up yeah. to like 18 20 boxes at a time where we only take four at a time right people can just drive in with their car full of books yes I want to trade up my books for some beer. <laughs> and they drop off all their books. They'll get a couple off the shelf, and then they'll swap out for new, new yeah. stuff. So it's it's been wonderful. That ease of access yeah. is an absolute bonus. Uh, yeah. They don't have to. We have no parking at our library, so oh, it's it's that's rough. really hard sometimes for people to come in, find a parking spot, get in the library. Um, sometimes you wind up walking like a half a block to a block just to get to the mm -hmm. library. But now you just drive into this liquor store, you park your car, you get out, you check out the shelf, you get what you want, and you get in the car and you leave. Mm -hmm. You don't have to buy liquor. No. But if you do, it's a bonus. Yeah. And it's all of this is free money for the friends, like I said. Mm -hmm. And the friends, you know, their mission is to support our programs, events, and activities. Mm -hmm. And they just give the money back. So, for instance, I was telling Krista this morning that our summer reading program is going so gung-ho that <laughs> we... At right now, or where we were at the end of last year's summer reading program for prizes, we ran out of prizes. <laughs> so the friends were willing to donate more money, more money to, to buy additional things. prizes because they're getting a steady income stream. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not normal for them. They're used to every April having that book sale and getting that you know nine to $10,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Well, now they're getting the annual sale plus $500 a month. Right. So they're more willing to a assist us. There's wiggle room there to... When Absolutely. You need something on the fly like that. Exactly. Like we're, we, you know, usually it's we're planning programming for the next year, and can you budget that out? But this is a surprise. We need more now. <laughs> now they don't even really balk uh, when we go to them and ask for money mm -hmm. for things. They're like, yeah, here. Because the, <laughs> the whole it, point is for the money to be used. Yeah, they don't want to hold on to it. Yeah. And as a private 501c3, you know, they have limits on their checking account. Mm -hmm. They've had to transfer money yeah, to um, yeah. Fremont Area Community Foundation, to like a pass-through account, because they had too much money in their checking account. So we they, we've been asked to please make a large expenditure on something. Victim of their success, as they say. <laughs> exactly. So now that we have the expansion project going on and they're the fundraisers for it, they're able to move some of that money over to the expansion project fund. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a volunteer group. These are all retired teachers and librarians mm -hmm. and community members, yeah. and they they don't have time to be managing this amount of money yeah. and. So they're like, just spend it because I don't want it in my checking account. <laughs> and it makes it easier to balance the checkbook. Sure. Um, so that's how we're going to sustain it. And I think it is going to be sustainable. It's a huge success. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm just absolutely amazed. And all of this mm -hmm. because my staff and I have been talking since I started that I get things have been done this way for a long time. But we were all in agreement that 
if we want to become this, the hub of the community and the center of the community and we want to become important to the community, mm -hmm. we have got to start thinking outside the box and doing things differently. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely uh, an outside the box project. Yeah, be where they don't expect you, where you've never been before. No, no. and yeah. I actually got asked once by the city administrator why I was participating in a certain event and I'm like, because it's educational and I have the knowledge to provide to these people for that. Mm -hmm. And what do you get in return? Well, they were donating items to the library. So it was, it was a great partnership, but people can't understand why we're involved in that event or activity. Yeah. Well, anything in the community will try to be a part of it. So this is great program. Um, I do recommend very few communities have a drive through liquor store, so. That's, what, yeah, that's, that's particular situation is unique. Um, well, I don't, I've, I've seen drive through liquor stores yes. in various places, yes, but you may not have the same thing, but you could do something in it with some other kind of business. Absolutely. Yeah. So we were, I was laughing when I first moved to Fremont, the first thing I saw was this drive through <laughs> liquor store. Uh, my family's from Winter, South Dakota, and they have five drive through liquor stores up there. I haven't seen it since I was a child, so I laughed at it, and I thought it was hilarious. Just like home. Just like home, and I'm like, wow, drive through liquor. Hmm. Turns out they're one of our best partners. Uh, they are amazing to work with. I couldn't ask for a better partner than Jeff. Um, the business is wonderful. They're very nice people, and his staff is doing all this for no additional mm -hmm. pay. Uh, they just really enjoy the community coming in. Well, it's just it's for them for, on their side too, making themselves um, important to the community. Absolutely, and showing we're not just some drive-through liquor store to get your your booze. It's we care about the community and other and this kind of service yes. and education of the children and literacy and everything. And so it's good for them as well. I mean, it's there's really no downside to it not really um, from both sides and this is why we do encourage libraries to do all sorts of partnerships and looking in your community and that is a struggle that a lot of libraries have is budget yes um even if you do have a friends group or a foundation is how are we going to do this how are we going to have the budget and the time and the staff and it's just talk to your businesses in your community talk to anyone you never know who might think oh yeah the library's great but i never thought about it but Absolutely. let's figure out a way we could do something and just get out there and ask. Yeah. And we do. We've hit, uh, we go to nonprofits, for profit businesses, uh, individual groups. So Qantas, Rotary, mm -hmm. we've received exactly. grants oh, from yeah. them for different things. Um, we partnered with the Hope Center, which is like, oh, it's kind of an educational center for kids after school, before school, summertime, et cetera. Uh, we partnered with Jefferson House, which is a boys' home. And just different groups around town. We go downtown to the businesses on the local downtown area. We partner with them all the time. Mm -hmm. um, downtown and the bricks kind of businesses. Um, we partner with Three Rivers Live or Three Rivers Health System, mm -hmm. and we're providing them a space to do some different testing and some informational sure. educational things. And that's the thing too. A thing about partnering. It doesn't like this one is an obvious. It's benefiting the library with. Um, you know, physically getting the books out, the, out, uh, getting the money in. But sometimes the partnering isn't, and this is, I think, because some people have trouble making this leap. It isn't always something the library is doing for the library. You are providing space for an event, space for this, um, usually medical testing. Yes. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the service the library is doing, uh, the traditional service, as in, in addition to when you come here to do this testing, we will then throw our books at your people or do whatever. Exactly. It's not that at all. It's just the space to do the, for them to do the thing. Yes. And then everyone thinks, oh, the library can do, I can just go there for a meeting. I can just go there for the space. Yes. Or they will provide what I need for this event or something. And that's where you've got to think, how am I, what's going on in the community that I need to do? And, and even if I don't physically get something back, and this is what I think a lot of them have that issue is, well, what are we getting out of it? And it's, it's the notoriety. Maybe yep, is the exactly. way to say it, the, the fact that the library is in people's minds yes. all the time and that will eventually turn over into something else down the road in the future that could be money or donations of books Absolutely. or donations of time, um, doing a presentation at the library on something. It'll, it'll, it'll all come back in the end. Yeah. We're partnering with um, Blue Yoga in Fremont and we were providing them space to do free classes for uh, individuals. Mm -hmm. So we're doing two different types. We're doing an English-based and a Spanish-based yoga cool. class. Uh, following the flood, we had a large population of um, our Hispanic community that was completely stressed out, mm -hmm. uh, depressed. You know, they lost their homes, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we were providing mm -hmm. Spanish yoga for the mothers and the children to come in and just get some uh, 
relax relaxation and release. rebuild and yeah. release and mental health is important just as much when these things happen as Absolutely. physically getting your home back and yeah so they've seen an uptick and their people using their yoga services but she comes to the library and provides we do a baby mommy yoga which cool. <laughs> you, you like have your baby strapped to you or you're holding them or you're playing with them while you're doing yoga it's <laughs> And then we have the Spanish yoga, the English yoga. Uh, we do chair yoga now. Mm -hmm. So older individuals that have trouble getting right. on the floor doing the they moves. Do in the chairs, yeah. So it's just it's thinking outside the box. And mm -hmm. uh, my staffs, they're so different, each one of them, and the different things that they like to do, their hobbies, oh, sure. their activities, things of that nature. So when you start throwing it out there and say, just think about stuff and go do it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a quote about failure is one of the best things in the world because you, oh, sure. you, you learn from it so well. I'm like, go out there and fail. But, but you if you don't, try. you wind up with the drive through <laughs> liquor store that makes a ton of money for you and it in turn helps the community and, and increases literacy in your community. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, who thought a drive through liquor store was going to increase literacy in our children? Yeah. That's you just, just never know. Yeah. It's amazing. So. <laughs> Did you have That's any very cool. questions pop in there? Um, no, let's see. Does anybody have any questions? Anything you want to ask, you know, about what they did and any other, you know, issues with that happened with this? <laughs> Are you sure? I'm going to hit arrow and I'm going to get the last slide. Yeah. Okay. Go. I'll go show you the pictures again. So this is, the wall is so like. Yeah, the wall. Okay, so there's a yellow behind it. Yeah. Yes. So it's like okay. six foot tall. Wow. It, it's. Yeah. Six or seven foot tall. I think that top row on the right side is almost eight foot. Yeah, there's some extra books up there. You so can you can see, see on the left hand side, there's just some sticks going up. He's actually finished those shelves now and he's added mm -hmm. more because he likes having the books there. So uh, he, I mean, that was just dead space. Yeah. So I assume there's there's ladders and stuff or does he have step stools? Yeah, step stools. For people yep. to get up there. Okay. And yeah. he goes out there and lets people look around and uh, they'll mm -hmm. crawl up there and get the stuff down for you. and Which is good. Yeah. It's great. I mean, in a library, we would never go that tall. No. But he can at his drive-thru mm -hmm. liquor store. And, and you can put it up against that wall there, yeah. And it's really bright because um, usually it's sunlight that they're working with in there. And I think it helps that that garage door is open pretty regularly mm -hmm. and you, you get airflow in there. So these books aren't just sitting in some storage unit in boxes and oh, just yeah, getting get achy. Damp and, mm -hmm. They're airing out and they're drying out and it's probably being very helpful for them to be sitting there on his shelves. So, mm -hmm. but Jeff's an amazing man. He just, uh, how he ever came up with this is just, <laughs> I think it's cause he saw the books every day. Yeah. Cause he came to our little building and sorted with his mom and moved all the boxes. And I guess if you look at something long enough, something will click and when you're thinking about what you space you have available. So, um, this is something you've got going with the, the liquor store has, any other business now or organization come to you and said, can we do something like this too in our place? Because we see how successful this is. And I mean, I mean, this thing, I mean, here you're, you're, you're reporting to us on the amount of money you're making, the fact that it increased his business is there. Has this been um, reported back to the community, to the city, yes. to the public in general to say, Hey, this is what is happening. The side effect of this to the liquor store side. Yes. We, we advertise all the time. I write my articles, uh, weekly articles about it quite often. Uh, we talk about it at our friends group, at our library board meeting. Um, I can inform the community, the city. I've had a couple people mention it, but nobody's ever moved forward on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but this has also drawn their attention to, like we do some very strange story times. So the mall called and they just wanted us to come take one of their empty stores and do a story time. So we went okay. up there for six months and we just parked our Mm -hmm. little pads and the kids could come in. Um, it worked for a little while and then, you know, malls are so uh, fluctuating around the holidays. Yeah. So it was hard for us to send staff up there when we weren't getting any kids, but it was a partnership that was created at, because of something like this. Mm -hmm. So whether it's actually having our materials in their business or just how can we partner and let's work together because we are getting such recognition yeah that they think it's wonderful to be partnered with the library so all the news stories out there definitely I mean. absolutely and our local like radio station our newspaper they're very supportive um, Tammy McKeegan from the Fremont Tribune comes on a regular basis to our library board meetings and she writes articles about us all the time uh, Colin does as well and mm -hmm. it's great to have that support in the community um, so it, yeah. this is helping. It's mm -hmm. giving us a good vibe. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm I'm loving everything about it. I I really I had that moment where I sat in my office for an hour, 
and just thought about it because I knew this was a big step forward mm -hmm. and it could really fail. Mm -hmm. But I just had this, you know what, just do it moment. And Try it. Yeah. So it, it didn't like, I mean, especially having the, like the, and the other thing at libraries of trouble is how are we going to do this with the staff? Our staff is already doing so many things. You didn't have to have your staff do it. That's, and that's the thing too. You've got to find the people like Jeff who will, be the outside staff, I guess, Absolutely. And, and can do it. And you, you never know who you're going to talk to in just conversation. That's why you're always, always on, I guess, when you're <laughs> out and talking to people about just um, about the library or even not talking about the library, just yes. out socially or going to the grocery store or whatever. And someone knows who you are or says something, you just mention something and you never know where what will snowball. It's hilarious. Yeah. I took my car in to get repaired and the auto shop gives you a ride to work <laughs> uh -huh. while well, they had other people in the car. And as soon as they found <laughs> right. out I was from the library, I had all these questions about the book nook. I had <laughs> questions about the expansion project, et cetera. Oh, so yeah. the whole car ride back to the library was a pitch for the library. <laughs> but it happens every day because mm -hmm. of the news coverage that we get. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So. He only has this one location, right? There's yes. no other. Okay. Just this one. Um, it'd be great if he opened another one, but mm. that would be. Well, that would be up to him, yeah. And you said as long as he's still the owner there, there's no chance of him. He's not talking about moving on or something or nope. anything, and right? He's so younger. He yeah, he's about my age. Yeah. So it's, okay. I don't think we're at risk of losing this for any time <laughs> soon. And the funny thing was when the friends agreed to do it, they're like, you know, We'll give it a shot. If it doesn't work in the first four months or so, we'll just call it quits. And that, that yeah, that, that's a good attitude to have, actually. And I mean, I mean, I think as we, this is actually kind of a good show leading up to what I'm doing next week and what's coming up, which is library public library accreditation here in Nebraska, Absolutely. where libraries are working on what um, you know talking about strategic plans, community needs response planning, and everything. And one of the things that we have them think about is coming up with a program or a project or a goal for what you're going to do. And I think, and this is the thing too, we need to do a whole show about failure because that's a thing. But what if it's not going to work? What if we can't pull it off? That's okay. You can go into it with a completely like, I don't know if this is even a thing, <laughs> but it doesn't hurt us much to try it. So right. meh, whatever. That's an okay attitude to go into because you never know what might come out the other side. Absolutely. Yeah, you, know, you can go into it. It doesn't have to be, I'm so gung ho. This is going to be the perfect thing and everything's going to work and we have it all laid out from beginning to end. Right. It doesn't have to be that way. This is a perfect example of they weren't all in really. No. They were kind of iffy. The city and some community members were not all in, but your response to that is we're just going to try it see what happens if it doesn't work we'll try something else um if it we discover it needed some tweaking maybe that's what we'll do and that's okay just thinking outside the box from your very very first slide there that's all we're talking about and and it's okay to come back later and say you know what it didn't work it was a complete failure yeah didn't happen um we're gonna have to regroup and try something else Absolutely. Um, and that's that's just how you get anything done. And that is perfectly acceptable way to do it. Yeah. And I will say, if you're going to go outside the box and you're going to try something, um, one of the things I've tried to get through to my staff uh, repeatedly is you have to give it time. So yeah, it's not going to be instantaneous. No. And, and you need time to market what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't work after 30 days, you need to keep going because you've got to give that marketing time to get out there. Mm -hmm. So we, like I said, four months, that was a pretty good number mm -hmm. to wait and see how long and does it work, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're going to try something out of the box and three days later, it's not working, mm -hmm. you can't just stop. You need to take into consideration that you need to give it time to get out there yeah. and give it time to, become the norm and then people might participate or get the information out there uh, give it some time mm -hmm. let it let it go try it uh, don't just keep doing it cancel do it cancel do it cancel mm -hmm. um, give things some time get it on a calendar get it out there in the community calendar the what you're doing um, etc just give it some time yeah people are gonna have to have time to hear about it and tell their friends about it and then you know, when you share things to your friends about something cool that's going on and it, it's like Apple library it takes them well I'll check that out but 
I'm busy this month, and then next month I'm going on vacation, so it might be after that that I'll get around to checking out this cool thing, or the, and it, not just libraries, this cool restaurant you mentioned to me, or uh, this show that I want to see, or something. It can take time to for everything to, to trickle down and get out there, yeah. It's not going to be a mad dash all at once. It's not like the first day of summer reading. No, and we... <laughs> Which has been probably, when it first started, was not a huge success. I don't know, I'm just making guessing the very first summer Sorry. reading program people are probably like what? What's uh, this? but now the kids and parents go crazy Got for out. it and yeah yes. <laughs> absolutely yeah it's not like we got all that news coverage the first day that you put the shelves up no no but that's something you can do too if you want I mean they eventually hear about it and then come do the story but you can proactively reach out to them to say we want you to come and do a story or we've written a press release about a thing we're doing so can you put this out there to let people know? So um, you can be proactive with that, um, so or good. you can wait for them to hear about it too and come to you. Yeah. Um, but they can still do more than one story too. They can do your opening press release saying, here's a thing, and then come back in two, three, four months, whatever it is, yes. to follow up on, um, if it's successful mostly. <laughs> yes, if it's successful. <laughs> uh, about um, how it's going, how it's still gonna be going, um, any changes. Um, that might be happening with it. And I know that the Omaha World Herald, when they came out to do the story, we didn't reach out to them. They just heard about it. They heard about it, on, and awesome. they reached out to Jeff. Yeah. So yeah. it was awesome. So are there any changes he's thinking about doing to this? He um, wants to build it on what? bigger. Just more. Where, he'll, where more? Does he have more room? I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> what he, he, he wants more. He wants bigger. He wants. Well, you can only go so tall before it's just not going to exactly. work. Exactly. Right? And he has he filled the whole length of the building? Yes. You couldn't really tell from photos that it's already Now, dead. today, it is all full. And dead, okay. It's amazing. And they, so, like their staff, I walked in one day, I actually went in there to get wine, and the staff member was sitting at the little desk because when there's not customers, you don't have a lot to do. Mm -hmm. She was reading a book off the shelf. Sure. <laughs> so, it was great to see that his staff is reading as well, mm -hmm. and they're very, very helpful, and they know where the material's at on the shelf, and they're like, if you're looking for kids, it's down there. and they are just yeah. loving it. I think his staff is having a really good time with it. Yeah. Do, if it's slow, they can just go there and check out the books and see what's coming new, especially yeah. with this such, such turnover. Absolutely. That there is with it, like you said. Wow. And the community interaction that they're seeing that they don't normally see with the folks dropping off 10 boxes or eight boxes. Mm -hmm. They're helping them unload their vehicles and they're talking and they're communicating and they're talking yeah. about the library. And yeah. so it's a wonderful community interaction as well. That's a, that's another side effect you wouldn't think about because probably usually people sit in their car said, bring me a six pack of this and a box of that wine and I'm gone. bye. Yes. <laughs> but now they're chatting and they're browsing the books and what kind of books do you like? Oh, I like that kind too. Let's absolutely. I, I've read a good book on that topic. Yeah. It's like having a community book club without yeah. having a community yeah. book club. So a reader's advisory. Absolutely. Think, yeah. If they've been reading books off the shelves there, they're just been sitting around. So well, this is very cool. I'm glad we got to hear because I've seen the news stories about this. Yes. That's, yeah. And I, I shared them all over the place, of course. <laughs> it was just so amazing. I remember hearing about when it was first happening, and I was like, well, that's really creative and different. It was and amazing. it just keeps kind of getting reported on and how successful it is. And so being able to see it, this huge row of books. Yeah. Um, Back over is, there. Yeah. Is very cool. Yeah. This picture doesn't even do justice to how long that. You can't fit the whole thing in. Actually, is. I mean, she's as back as far as she can get on the liquor side uh -huh. and still couldn't get the whole thing in there. Yeah. So, and there's 30. Those are probably sturdier than half the shelves at our library. They so. look like very good, like not just like plywood or something. No, they're two by yeah. fours and uh, one by eights. And mm -hmm. he, he did an amazing job. Attached sure. to the wall? I think, Attached. Some way? Okay. Yep. Absolutely. He, he knew what he was I doing. Remember the safety. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. Does anybody have any questions or comments or anything? Um, oh, okay. Well, this isn't a question, but this gotcha. is a request for for uh, for Tina. We do um, have. I, this is a side effect of our show here. Uh, we do book face Fridays here at the Nebraska Library Commission posts onto our blog and our Facebook and Twitter and Instagram um, posts uh, those book faces hold a book in front of your face or body or something. And whenever we have someone who's coming in from outside the commission for our Encompass Live show, they get snagged to do these. <laughs> so I just got a notice from our staff there to um, make sure Amy gets brought down so she can do a photo. So um, um, no, Amy's asking to bring Tina down, sorry. <laughs> um, 
So look for Keenan to be on, I assume, this Friday. This Friday's book Friday. Yeah. Yay. I'm not sure what they've got going for yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's always fun and creative that they do that. Um, so um, I think nobody has any questions or anything about the um, presentation, but that's great. Um, you guys uh, can always reach out to yes. um, Tina at um, Keen Memorial Library in Fremont, Nebraska. Um, look that up and see and ask her more about it if you want to. Um, her uh, slides will be available um, afterwards um, with the archive as well. I've already got a hold of those, so um, you'll have all that information and the data and statistics there that you can look at um, if you want to try and sell the same kind of thing if you have a drive-through liquor store or something similar to show how this kind of um, the success of this uh, kind of thing can be. Um, the recording will be on our website, and I will switch over to, we do have um, browser up here, and I'll show you if I can get on the right, there we go, um, on our Encompass Live website. Uh, this is our Library Commission website, but if you uh, use your search engine of choice and look up Encompass Live, so far, we're the only thing called that on the internet. Nobody else can ever call themselves this. <laughs> Um, and you'll come to our um, main website for the show. So here we have our upcoming shows for the next couple of months shown. Um, but at the very bottom here is where our archives are. So this is where today's archive will be. Um, these are the most recent ones are at the top of the list. So this is the one from last week. Um, and we had uh, the recording and the presentation of links to both of those will be for today's show will be right up there. Um, should be up by um, the end of the day today. Everyone who attended today or came in remote or registered will get an email from me. And we also shared out to all of our various social media places. Um, while I'm here, I'll show you, um, this is our archives. And you see we do have a search feature here. Encompass Live started in 2009. So we're in our 10th, 11th year now. So we do have all of our archives here on the page. So our IT people here, thank you, Vern, has created a search feature finally for us because it was just getting very unwieldy to go through this long page. Um, you can search the entire archives for something and or you can just look at the most recent 12 months. You want really up to date um, information. So when you are looking for our archives, I just want to point out, be aware of um, the date on them. Whenever we post them here, it does show the date that something was originally broadcast. So keep that in mind. When you are watching any of our shows with 10 years worth of information, there will be things in here that are old, um, outdated. Uh, some links might not work anymore. Uh, service might not exist anymore or might have completely changed since our show. Um, but so pay attention to the date of the original broadcast. Uh, but we are um, librarians, is what we do. We archive and, his, and you know historically save things. So we'll always have everything up there, even if it's old and outdated. But it all does have a date on it so you know exactly when um, it came was originally done. So we do have, that will wrap it up for today's show. We do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. So if you are a big Facebook user, you can give us a like over there. Here's where we have a reminder to log in for today's show. Uh, we have, eh, go away. I do not want to log in right now. Thank you. Reminders about coming shows, when our recording is available. We put it up here. So if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. The Library Commission also has a Twitter account um, that some things oh, things will be um, pushed out to as well, mailing lists that you can sign up for. So um, everything gets pushed out there. So that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, hope you join us next week when, where are we at here? Next week, oh, we will be talking, I just mentioned about public library accreditation. I just added this to here. Um, in Nebraska, we have a public library accreditation program where um, each year groups of libraries are reaccredited. Um, gives them some funding, um, get them to uh, just take a look at their library, do community needs planning like what Tina has done at her library. Um, and the pro program, the process starts in July, so next week, right before we open up for our reaccreditation or new accreditation, I'm doing a one hour session on um, the whole program. So if you're interested in that, if you are a Nebraska library who, are, who is coming up for renewal this year, you're going to want to take a look at that. Or if you're just interested in being coming accredited, um, this is a short version of my longer workshops, which is like two to three hours long, that'll give you a you know, smaller version of everything that you might need to know about accreditation. So please just sign up for that and any of our other upcoming shows we have here. Um, I've got dates filled in. I've got, you can notice, I think I've got a date in July still that I'm working on filling, but um, keep it on our schedule. We're always adding new things there um, throughout the year. And um, that's
that's it. So it doesn't look like we have any comments or questions. Thank you so much, Gina, you know, for coming Thank down you. and telling us all about this. This is great. And I want to go for, um, I think I need to go to Fremont to pick up some uh, wine. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, we're going on a road trip. <laughs> uh, so thank you for coming down. Thank you everyone for attending, and hopefully you see we'll see you uh, another time on Encompass Live. Thank you. Bye. -bye.